Overview, the New York Times number one bestseller, millions of young women look to Marie Forleo as their inspiration for empowerment and achievement, Oprah Winfrey. This book delivers a knockout punch to whatever is holding you back. Cheryl Strayed, author of Wild. Do you ever have trouble finishing what you start? Do amazing ideas come to you all the time, but after the initial excitement wanes, you struggle to follow through? If you're creative and ambitious, the answer is likely yes. The problem isn't you. It's not that you're not hardworking, intelligent, or deserving, but that you haven't yet installed the one key belief that will change everything. Everything is figure outable. Whether you want to leave a dead-end job, heal a relationship, grow a business, master your money, or just find two free hours in your day, everything is figure outable will train your brain to think more positively and help you break down any dream into manageable steps. Inside, you'll learn how to deal with criticism and imposter syndrome, why it's crucial that you strive for progress, not perfection, how to bounce back from failure, how to overcome a lack of time and money. You'll also hear triumphant stories of everyday people using the everything is figure outable philosophy to transform their life. Everything is figure outable is more than just a fun phrase to say. It's a practical, actionable discipline, and it's about to make you unstoppable. Chapter one, the Tropicana orange. The obvious is that which is never seen until someone expresses it simply. Khalil Gibran. Everything is figure outable. Yes even if you're starting from scratch, even if you've already tried and failed, even if you don't have a clue what the hell you're doing or why things keep going wrong, even if the world has told you time and time again that you can't, even if you've been born into extraordinary challenges or find yourself with a deck stacked against you. Maybe you're wondering whether this idea can help you confront a harrowing reality, like when you're in the midst of despair or a sense of endless futility, experiences like a frightening and life-altering diagnosis, the tragic loss of a child or loved one, mental illness and recovery after abuse. Yes, everything is figure outable helps us face hard truths consciously. Throughout this book, you'll hear triumphant tales of everyday people confronting loss, illness, and heart-wrenching pain. These figure outable field notes illustrate how this one simple idea can help us find resilience, resourcefulness, and hope, especially when we need it most. Despite what society, your family, or your mind may have led you to believe, you are not broken. Nothing is intrinsically wrong with you. You're not a mistake, or a fraud, or a fake. You're not weak or incapable. Quite simply, none of us were given an owner's manual at birth. Our educational system doesn't train us to harness the power of our thoughts, beliefs, emotions, and the wisdom of our bodies. It doesn't teach us how to develop winning mindsets, perspectives, and practical habits, not only to meet and overcome life's challenges, but also to experience real joy and fulfillment. It fails to show us how much intrinsic power we all have. Sadly, we get very little, if any, practical training on how to use our gifts to make a difference. It's up to us to fix that, here and now. As the great Maya Angelou said, do the best you can until you know better. Then, when you know better, do better. Which is why I'm thrilled you're here because this book will help you do both. Yet, there can be no significant change in the world unless we first have the courage to change ourselves. In order to change ourselves, we must first believe we can. Together, we'll use this one simple belief, everything is figure outable, to activate our inherent ability to transform our lives, and by doing so, instigate meaningful change around us, which is exactly why this book is in your hands right now. We need you. We need your heart, your voice your courage, your joy, your creativity, your compassion, your love, and your gifts, now more than ever. Chapter 2. Your Roadmap to Results You don't make progress by standing on the sidelines, whimpering and complaining. You make progress by implementing ideas. Shirley Chisholm Just because this idea is simple doesn't mean the road ahead is easy. You'll need humility and courage self-compassion, a willingness to experiment, a sense of humor, and patience. Lots and lots of patience. Train your brain for growth. Your brain is an extraordinary biocomputer and it constantly running programs that work either for or against you. 
That's why we want you to be aware of two destructive thoughts, viruses, if you will, that can pop up when you're learning something new. The trick is to catch these thoughts, viruses, and turn them into productive questions. Why? Because the brain is wired to answer questions. No matter what question you ask, your brain will immediately start searching for the answer. When you transform these thoughts into helpful, productive questions, you train your brain to help you learn, grow, and improve. You can always learn one of two things. First, you can learn a new angle to a concept you're familiar with, or more likely, you'll realize that you're not fully executing on the things you already know. Try it before you deny it. Sure, there's no scientific evidence to confirm my hypothesis that everything is actually figureoutable, but you'll never grow beyond your current circumstances if you're closed off to everything except what you currently know. More useful and supportive belief than everything is figureoutable? With that in mind, here are three rules of play. This mental container helps you stay focused on what matters, your growth, your fulfillment, and your ability to access your inborn wisdom to solve problems and contribute to others. Rule number one, all problems or dreams are figureoutable. Rule number two, if a problem is not figureoutable, it's not really a problem. It's a fact of life or law of nature. For example, death or gravity. Rule number three, you may not care enough to figure this problem out or achieve this particular dream. That's okay. Find another problem or dream that ignites a blazing fire in your heart and go back to rule number one. Do the work. Not every exercise will produce mind-blowing insights, but neither of us can predict which challenge will trigger a seismic paradigm shift or game-changing aha. You'll get out of this what you put in. Do the work as suggested. Give your very best. If something doesn't make sense right now, earmark it and come back later. The point is to stay in action and keep moving forward. All it takes is one new perspective or tool and your life will never be the same again. You'll also notice that some of the key points circle back on themselves. Connect with our community. The figure outable philosophy becomes geometrically more powerful and fun when applied in collaboration with others. You'll reach your collective goals faster and with a greater sense of joy, creativity, and camaraderie than ever before. Chapter 3. The Magic of Belief Alice, this is impossible. The Mad Hatter, only if you believe it is. Alice in Wonderland, 2010 film. Where are you? Look around you right now. No, really, do it. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, stop reading and notice every item within your eye shot. Become aware of what's in your hands, including this book, the devices you have near you, what you're wearing, if anything, hello, what you're sitting in or standing on, and any and all objects or structures that surround you. Every movie you've ever seen, every story you've ever heard, every book you've read, every song that's making you sing, dance, or cry has taken the mystical journey from the world of unmanifest to manifest. Form formless idea to concrete reality. These minds of ours are magical creation machines. They're the birthplace of every extraordinary experience we've ever encountered and every major breakthrough in human history. Nothing exists in our world that does not first exist in our mind. That's the universal gift we've been given to help us shape our lives and, collectively, the world around us. We're born creators with an innate power to bring our ideas and visions into reality. Though admittedly simplified, the process of creation goes something like this. Thought, feeling, behavior, result. While this might seem painfully obvious, this formula is one we can easily forget, especially as it relates to things we want to figure out. The human body on belief. Turns out our beliefs control our physical body too. In his excellent book, The Anatomy of Hope, Jerome Groupman, MD writes, researchers are learning that a change in mindset has the power to alter neurochemistry. Belief and expectation, the key elements of hope, can block pain by releasing the brain's endorphins and encephalins, mimicking the effect of morphine. Intellectually, you know this. Let's say you're hiking in the woods. You catch a glimpse of something long, dark and S-shaped on the path a few yards ahead. Our beliefs either propel us to or prevent us from living to our fullest potential. Our beliefs determine whether we fail or succeed and how we define success in the first place. Just imagine the decades of relentless belief, action, and determination required to give women in the U.S. the right to vote. The power that beliefs have over our lives simply cannot be overstated. But before we begin to change our beliefs, it's helpful to understand more about where they come from in the first place. Why our beliefs tend to stick. We do not see things as they are. We see them as we are. Chances are, you'll continue to affirm the belief that marriages never last 
by listening for and retelling stories of broken marriages from family, friends, and the media. This highlights another fundamental fact about our beliefs. Our brains tend to reinforce what we already believe. This well-documented phenomenon is called confirmation bias. Simply put, confirmation bias means we look for and find evidence to support our beliefs. Chapter 4. Eliminate Excuses Don't feel sorry for yourself. Only assholes do that. Haruki Murakami Everybody makes excuses from time to time, so don't feel bad. But if you're committed to figuring things out, all excuses have got to go. It's time to call yourself out and uncover all the ways you bullshit yourself. Once you get honest about how flimsy your excuses really are, you'll reclaim not only enormous stores of energy, but also your power to change. You are 100% responsible for your life, always, and in all ways. It's not your parents. It's not the economy. It's not your husband or your wife or your family. It's not your boss. It's not the schools you went to. It's not the government or society or institutions or your age. You are responsible for what you believe, how you feel, and how you behave. To be clear, I'm not saying you're responsible for the actions of others or injustices that have happened to you, but you are responsible for how you respond to the actions of others. In fact, lasting happiness can only come when you take 100% responsibility for yourself. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Be bold. Break your patterns. Step away from societal norms that suffocate your life. With a few tweaks, you'll see how possible more free time really is. Number one, eliminate media consumption. Eliminate all media, including social media, TV, online videos, magazines, catalogs, podcasts, news, and any other information-based inputs. Number two, break out of your inbox. Put up a vacation autoresponder and limit email checking to one to three times per day, maximum. Do not check email right after you wake up. If you can check every few days, even better. Number three, eat better, faster, and cheaper. For some of us, one of the biggest recurring time sucks is feeding ourselves and our families. Figuring out what to eat and then shopping, prepping, cooking, and cleaning up. It feels like a whole other job. Chapter 5. How to Deal with the Fear of Anything Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more, so that we may fear less. Attributed to Marie Curie. You might have heard that fear is the acronym for false evidence appearing real. Or maybe you roll with cheeky addition, fuck everything and run. I prefer the more actionable version, face everything and rise. Let's take a closer look at fear and the multitude of ways we can metabolize, manage, and mitigate it as we continue on our figure outable journey. Transforming your fear is more art than science. Different approaches work for different people, which is why you should mix, match, and experiment with the following suggestions. They're a blend of cognitive, emotional, and somatic strategies that can transform any fear into productive, creative fuel. I've used and taught them over the years, so I know all of them work when used in good faith. Let's begin with an important paradigm shift. Fear is not the enemy. Your fear doesn't need to be crushed or annihilated. It needs to be listened to and appreciated for the gift it offers. Think about an infant who wails in her crib or a dog who incessantly barks. They're trying their best to communicate something. They just don't have the language skills to articulate it. Think about the word fail like this. It's a faithful attempt in learning. That's it. A faithful attempt in learning. It's nothing to fear and nothing to void. From this perspective, failure is not a glitch in your figure outable journey. It's a must-have feature. As cliche as it sounds, you can only truly fail if you stop learning and growing. Chapter 6. Define Your Dream Everything's in the mind. That's where it all starts. Knowing what you want is the first step toward getting it. Mae West We live in a highly intelligent and responsive universe. Whether you're aware of the process or not, you're co-creating your reality through the thoughts, words, and behaviors you choose minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. Your life is an ongoing act of creation, and you're 100% in charge. When you make a clear, committed decision about something you want, it's analogous to picking up the phone and placing a to-go order with the cosmos. That's why, as much as possible, you must strive to be decisive, clear, and specific. Wishy-washy goals get wishy-washy results. One of the primary reasons people don't get what they want is they're afraid to ask for it. 
They're frightened. They don't have what it takes. But here's a secret that many people miss. You wouldn't have the dream if you didn't already have what it takes to make it happen. You were born with everything you need to answer the call of your soul. That call encompasses the vast realm of intuitive desires, creative projects, ideas, goals, and dreams you hold in your heart. Step one, list your top one-year dreams. Step two, get real about this dream. Step three, choose one. Step four, make it specific, measurable, and actionable. Step five, determine your next three steps and get started now. Chapter seven, start before you're ready. Are you ready? Claus asked finally. No, Sonny answered. Me neither, Violet said. But if we wait until we're ready, we'll be waiting for the rest of our lives. Lemony Snicket, the Erastas Cellulator. Start before you're ready. The start before you're ready strategy means exactly what it says. Stop thinking and start doing. Make a move, any move. Send the email, register for the class, pick up the phone, schedule the meeting, have the conversation. Number one, beware of procrastination disguised as research and planning. Starting before you're ready doesn't mean you should be ignorant or haphazard. Depending on the nature of your dream and how much you already know, some initial research and planning may be necessary. For instance, to reach your ultimate dream of speaking conversational Spanish within the next 12 months, you might look into language immersion courses, research private instruction, and download a language app. That's fine. Number two, get skin in the game. Find a way to put your time, money, and or ego on the line. Create games that have real-world painful consequences if you don't keep moving. Cognitive psychology and decision theory show that we humans have something called loss aversion. That means we much prefer avoiding losses to acquiring gains. Number three, value growth and learning over comfort and certainty. Like many bootstrapping entrepreneurs, for those first few years of my business, I did everything myself. I wore all the hats, marketing and delivering my service, scheduling, invoices, website updates, content creation, email correspondence, customer service, you name it. Chapter 8. Progress, Not Perfection Perfection is unachievable. It's a myth and a trap and a hamster wheel that will run you to death. Elizabeth Gilbert The Perils of Perfectionism Perfectionism is self-abuse of the highest order and Wilson shape. All too often, we stop ourselves from doing anything new because we want so badly to get it right and get it right from the start, damn it. We want to represent an image to the world that we have it together. We have little to no tolerance for allowing ourselves the space and grace to be a beginner. Perfectionism isn't a set behavior. It's a destructive way of thinking about yourself. When you make a mistake or heaven forbid fail, you don't just feel disappointment in how you did, but in who you are. Remember, perfectionism is a poisonous serpent. It aims to strike at your creative jugular. Here's one of its most cunning and lethal moves, getting you to compare yourself to accomplished masters. The moment you measure your early efforts against someone who's been working their ass off for years, you've fallen into a perfectionist death trap. The fix for this is one magical mantra. Read this out loud. Progress, not perfection. Six tactics to practice. Use the following tactics to stay in the progress zone when the lure of perfectionism has pulled you off course. Number one, take small steps and ignore big drama. Perfectionism loves drama. You'll start to notice that even before you've taken any steps towards fulfilling a dream, perfectionism will chime in with endless berating questions. Number two, plan ahead for problems. No matter how organized or motivated you are, things will knock you off track. From illness to technology fails to everyday interruptions, there will be loads of obstacles on your path. Number three, and embrace self-doubt. After the novelty of chasing your big dream has subsided, chances are you'll be swallowed by a tsunami of self-doubt. Number four, number four, ask what's the next right move. After a setback, ask yourself this question, what's the next right move here? Listen for the answer. Number five, use the power of positive quitting. The old saying that quitters never win and winners never quit isn't true. Sticking with someone only because you're afraid of looking like a loser is a terrible idea. Number six, above all, cultivate 
patience. Chapter 9. Refuse to be refused. You just can't beat the person who never gives up. Babe Ruth. Millions of scientists face years, often decades, of failed experiments on the path to groundbreaking discoveries. Students make countless spelling errors, mathematical miscalculations, and mistakes as they stretch to grow and learn. Artists and athletes spend years grappling with rejection and defeat in pursuit of greatness. In the United States, LGBTQ plus activists suffered countless painful losses before the Supreme Court finally ruled same-sex marriage a constitutional right, especially when it comes to issues of social equality. We've still got a very long road ahead. I went for years not finishing anything, because of course, when you finish something, you can be judged. Erica Jean. For every single thing you think is extraordinary in this world, every movie, book, food item, comedian, TV show, guess what? Someone else hates it which is why most criticism is not constructive or even worth listening to. It's just someone's opinion. You know what they say about those, right? Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one, and most of them stink. Everyone has a right to their opinion, but opinions are subjective. Just because someone doesn't like what you do doesn't mean no one else will. A person's opinion is not the truth. It's their truth. It's unwise to waste time and emotional energy over the criticism of folks you don't know respect, or serve. My work certainly isn't for everyone. It's only for creative badasses like you. When it comes to critical feedback, don't be so fragile that you miss out on information that can help you learn and improve. Be strong enough to extract the value from the critics if it's there. Chapter 10. The world needs your special gift. There is a vitality, a life force, a quickening that is translated through you into action and because there is only one of you in all time, this expression is unique, and if you block it, it will never exist through any other medium, and be lost. The world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is, not how it compares with other expression. You were born with innate power to create change both in your life and in the lives of others. Keep going with any area of art, science, sports, or culture. All of the musicians in the world didn't stop. Beyonce or Lady Gaga or Stevie Nicks or Kendrick Lamar from adding their voices to the mix. The popularity of Phil Donahue didn't stop Oprah. Margaret Cho's comedic ingenuity didn't stop Ally Wong from expressing hers. Just imagine how much we would have missed out on if any of those brilliant beings stopped at the thought that their contribution was unnecessary because it had already been done. As Fred Rogers said, if you could only sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to people you may never dream of. Number one, share the shame. Most high achievers struggle with feeling like a fake, but never talk about it. It's like a dirty little secret everyone's afraid to admit. Start a hype file. A hype file is a place where you stockpile compliments, thank yous, accolades, and any comments from people who have said you've positively impacted them. Number three, shine your light out, not in. Think of your attention your mental, emotional, and spiritual energy as a flashlight that can only shine in one direction. This has been Everything is Figure Outable, Key Takeaways, Analysis, and Review. Thank you for listening to our quick learning audiobook review series. If you like what you heard, then check out our channel for more free audiobook reviews. We post new audiobooks every week. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to be first to hear of our latest reviews.